Once upon a time, in a village in Western Africa, lived a young man named Richard. He was known far and wide for his hard work and honesty. He earned the respect among his people because of his ways. Yet, despite his efforts, life seemed to work against him. No matter how much he told, his reward was meager and success seemed forever beyond his grasp. Richard was not a lazy man, nor did he lack in ambition. He had great hopes for greatness, but greatness seemed to be far away from him. From sunrise to sunset, he walked in his small farmland, sweating under the sun, under the unforgiving heat, yet every year, month in and month out, his crops did not yield as he hoped for. He planted his crops with the same care and attention as every farmer in the village. He watered them, fertilized the soil, sprayed on them, prayed for good weather, yet good luck seemed to run far away from him. When he will work for other farmers, their farms will come out very bountiful. But when he grew on his own farm, his farm wouldn't come out with so much good yield. But while the other fields grew very well, his crop would just wither away before harvest sometimes. His plot almost looked as if it was cursed and the earth refused to yield to his hard work. In time, the whispers of the village grew louder, and some will say, perhaps Richard is cursed. They will say, shaking their head in pity as they passed by his farm, feeling so sorry for him. Why else would a man put in so much hard work and nothing to show for it? Some of them will say, Richard was so hot by this gossip and momo, and he did everything he could, but still nothing was working for him. He then took to other trades, hoping that it might change, thinking that farming wasn't for him, but his fortune wasn't, it wasn't even better than farming. He now tried his hand on carpentry, trading, and even hunting, but luck seemed to evade him. Eventually, he just lost hope. Richard began to wonder if the villagers were right. Was he cursed? Has he been doomed to struggle from the moment he was born? The weight of these thoughts pressed heavily on his heart. One evening, after yet another long day of failed efforts, Richard wandered to the river bank. The sun had begun to descend casting the world in a soft golden light. But Richard felt only chill of hopelessness. He sat down by the water edge, his head in his hand, and later he stretched out his hand to the universe, wondering if he could escape this endless cycle of defeat. As the sound of the river's gentle flow with the air, Richard did not notice the approach of an old man behind him, until he heard the voice like the rustle of the leaf, then it broke his silence. Why do you weep, young man, said the old man. Startled, Richard looked behind him to see a frail figure standing behind him. The old man's face was deeply wrinkled like the back of an ancient tree, and his eyes twinkled with wisdom that seemed to reach into Richard's soul. Richard had seen this old man before. He was a traveler, known to visit different villages sharing his stories and wisdom with those who cared to listen. Some even said he was a seer, though nobody really knew his true origin. With a deep sigh, Richard answered, I have tried everything, yet nothing seemed to work for me. Nothing, nothing works for me. Why can't I prosper like others? It's as if the heavens have closed their doors to me. At my cost, the old man crouched down beside Richard and his gaze thoughtfully. Tell me, young man, what is your name? Richard replied with a trace of bitterness in his voice. 
What difference does it make if I tell you my name? The old man studied Richard for a long time and then said, Do you know what your name means? Tell me your name. The Richard shook his head, surprised at the question. My name is Richard. It was given to me at birth. I never thought anything about my name. Then the old man said, Richard means powerful ruler. The old man explained. But can you not see your name? Rich, hard. Can you not see the hard there? Yet here you are, defeated by your circumstances. Your name means a lot, but the word hard in it makes it so hard for you to progress. You carry the name of a ruler, but you do not rule over your life because your name has hard in it. Richard frowned. The old man words cuts in deeper into him, more than he had expected. Then what do I do? Should I abandon my name? Everybody knows me with this name. A smile tugged at the corner of this old man's lip. No, do not abandon your name. Just change it a bit, he paused, letting the weight of his words settle into Richard. Names carry power, young man, do you know that? They shape your destiny whether we realize it or not. The name you carry now does not reflect the man who you are meant to become. And it also affects you. From today, affirm to yourself and change that heart to more and call yourself rich more. For you will have more wealth, more joy, and more opportunity than you can ever imagine. Say to yourself that your name is rich more. And then Richard said, Yes, my name is Richmore. I am Richmore. I am Richmore. The universe, hear me, oh, my name is Richmore. Even if he was saying that, he was skeptical. But he felt a change as he was saying it within him. And then there was something about the old man's presence, something about the way he spoke. Then the old man left, and Richmore returned home. That night, under the light of a full moon, Richmore stood by his window. A cool breeze rustled through the window, and the star twinkled like a distant flame. With his heart still in doubt and desperate, he said aloud to himself, I am no longer Richard, I am now Richmore. May more blessing come to me, may more doors open for me, and then a soft wind seemed to carry his words far into the night, and for the first time in a long while, Richard felt like Richmond with a sense of peace and calm in his heart. The next day, when Richmond woke up, something strange happened. As Richmond walked through the village, he noticed people were looking at him differently. Their eyes were warm and smiles on their faces, some even waving him. Wealthy merchants started to greet him like they knew him as a businessman. One even approached him and asked him if he could join him in his business. Richmond was surprised that nobody has ever offered him this before. And then the man said, I've been looking for someone trustworthy to help me manage my store in the other village. Would you be interested in taking this job? Richmond's eyes blinked in surprise and he was shocked even if he didn't want to express it. No one has ever offered him this kind of opportunity before. But then the merchant face looked up, he looked up at Richard. Are you interested or not? With gratitude swelling in Richmond's chest, he accepted the offer gratefully. And then Richmond went home, packed some of his belongings and followed the merchant to the next village. He worked diligently in this merchant store for two years. It has been two years since Richmond left his village and his family to go learn and master the trade with this merchant. He had learned the in and out of this business so well that he built other businesses for this merchant. Richmond could now send money home to his family without blinking his eyes. He was so comfortable that he didn't believe in the level of success that he had created for himself. This merchant was so happy and impressed with the dedication and efforts Richmond had put into his business. And as such, at the end of two years after Richmond had served this man, 
the merchants gave Richmo five bags of gold to go set up his own business. And then one day, Richmo thanked the merchants, packed his bag and his money, and left for his own village. At home, his family were happy to see him. The villagers were also happy to see him. Richmond was no longer the man they once knew before. And then, Richmond settled down and opened business for himself in his village and also another shop for his wife. While at his business, he was up and going, helping those who he could help, and life went on smoothly. Then one day, a caravan broke down on the road just not too far from Richmond's business. And Richmond looked out into the road and saw that it was one of the prince of one of his village. And so he went there to offer his help. The prince, deeply grateful, invited Richmond to the royal court. Soon, Richmond became a trusted advisor in matter of commerce and trade. His reputation spread far and wide. News of Richmond's success reached every corner of the land. People who once pitied him now spoke of him with high admiration. And they will say, Have you heard of Richmond? And they will say, He was once like us who struggled in the death, but now, see how doors have opened for him. He is truly blessed. Richmond, though grateful for his newfound fortune, never forgot the old man's world. He understood that names carried power, but it's not just about the name that changed his life and his fate. It was the belief that he had in the new name he embraced.